Welcome to worship at Forest Park. Join me as we sing about God's provision and care in our lives, all the way my Savior leads me. All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercy? Who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in him to dwell. For I know what every fall be, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know what every fall be, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, cheers each winding path I tread, gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter, and my soul a thirst may be, gushing from the rock before me, Blow a spring of joy I see, gushing from the rock before me, blow a spring of joy I see. All the way my Savior leads me, oh the fullness of his love, perfect rest to me is promised in my father's house above when my spirit clothed immortal wings its flight to realms of day this my song through endless ages jesus led me all the way this my song through endless ages jesus led me all the way Will you join me in prayer? God of our hearts, you are our God in times of hurt. Your balm heals our wounds. You, are he you hear our prayers, our intercessions, and supplications. Your presence is pleasing to us, and we welcome you during this time. We rejoice in your embrace and offer you our boundless praise. In your son's name, amen. During this time of joys and concerns in the community of faith, I am reminded that earlier this week I attended a planning session for the children, youth, and young adults of the region of Oklahoma and the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. And we were trying to uh, navigate all the different ways that COVID has affected the different ministries and the different youth uh, outings that we plan on a normal year. And just muddling through all of the different dynamics at play uh, while we were trying to plan in uncertainty uh, reminds me of Forest Park as well. As we are continuing to plan and plan in the midst of uncertainty, we all could use each other's prayers. So please join me for a few moments of silent meditation and personal reflection, followed by our prayer. Will you pray with me? Almighty and wonderful God, we are thankful that you have claimed us 
as your own. We give you thanks and praise for all that you have done and offer our prayers and hope for all that you are going to do. Guide us in our faith journey and draw us ever nearer to you. For you are our God and we your people. We pray all of these things in the name of the one who taught his first disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. What are the ways that you are giving back to God? What are the ways that I am giving back to God? It's a question that needs to be asked over and over and over again. We ask things of God all the time. When we fall to our knees in prayer, we are asking God for things. But in a relationship, there is a give and take. And God offers us uh, the ability to enter into an authentic relationship with the divine. But again, there's a give and take. So how are you giving back to God? And when are you giving back to God? It's questions again in your spiritual life that you need to answer. The ways that you can support the ministries of Forest Park Christian Church is Tithely, which is our online option. It's under our offerings tab on our website. There's also the ability to mail a check or drop off a cash or check at the, at the church. We will, we will take it all. But again, uh, counting the different ways we are giving back to God is really helpful and a wonderful spiritual exercise. We will now receive this morning's offering. glad that we can claim the promise that our God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Let's sing together, you are my all in all. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious tool, Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. again I bless your name you are my all in all when I fall down you pick me up when I am dry you fill my cup you are my all in all Jesus Oh, God. 
So during this time when we are apart for communion, we've been doing really fun things at the communion table. Um, different things that I like, cakes and cookies and donuts and these types of things. But it occurred to me that this is not my table. This is the Lord's table. And there are times when I don't like what's on this table, but I'm still invited to this table. That's why we have what we have here. Barbecue chips are disgusting. They are gross. I hate them. I don't want this. I don't want the taste anywhere near me. And tea, who likes tea? This is disgusting. And so this is still the table that I'm invited to. I don't get to dictate what's on this table every time, but I am invited to this meal every single time. So on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, take, eat, for this is my body. And after the meal, he took the cup and he lifted it up and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also in remembrance of me. I now invite you to the communion table. So before we get to our text in Exodus, um, I need to set up the text and what's happening here. Remember the Israelites were in Egypt and they were in bondage and slavery and they cried out to God and God sent Moses to free the Israelites. After, uh, after all the plagues and everything, you got like Pharaoh saying, okay, take off, go, take anything you need. And so Moses and Aaron and everyone is, are leading the people across the desert, across the wilderness into Mount Sinai. And we, our text picks up here pretty quick after they left Egypt. So our reading is Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 through 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread... For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then Moses, or then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. And that way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord." Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining 
of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. May God add a blessing to the reading of the Holy Scriptures. You join me in prayer. Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Good morning. It is good to be with you in whatever way and whatever day you are connecting with us uh, this time. Allow me to summarize my understanding of this story from when it was first introduced to me all the way up until this past March. These Israelites had cried out over and over and over again for God to deliver them from slavery and oppression. God does so in dramatic fashion with locusts and frogs and hail that turns to fire and ultimately when the angel of death passes over the Hebrew houses and strikes down the Egyptians. And then Moses is leading his people to the promised land. But pretty soon after they left Egypt, they start complaining about the conditions that they are experiencing. Are we there yet? I want bread. I want meat. Remember, Egypt was better than this, right? I saw them. I was, when I experienced this story, I saw them as ungrateful, disrespectful, even a ridiculous people that they would ask for these things when God is providing so much. But they are complaining about food. Is that a legitimate complaint? If you're hungry, certainly you can complain about a lack of food. It's legitimate until one realizes that when they left Egypt, they took everything with them. They took the spoils of Egypt, but they also took all of their livestock, all of their cattle, all of their sheep. They took it all with them. They had food and they had meat. The problem is the sheep and the livestock were their source of income when they got to the place they were going. They didn't want to eat into their source of income. They had the means to eat meat every single day, but they didn't want to dip into their 401k here for the future earning potential. So I was really disappointed in the Israelites and their reaction to God and the general griping until March of 20. We have all suffered in some way during this pandemic. It has affected us all in different ways, financial issues, health issues, spiritual issues. And on the surface, if, if, you, if you don't go beneath the surface, on the surface, it appeared that I, that Bill Him, was set to ride out the lockdowns and distance restrictions with ease. The church has continued to pay my salary. I do not have an empty home to go home to. I have four other people in my house to, to talk with and share my day with. The five of us are not in any health conditions or vulnerable categories. Uh, it should have been just fine the way I was set up. And it was not fine for me. I was not prepared on how empty my tank would feel at the end of every single day. I was not doing as much during this pandemic, but it felt like I was busier than ever. And I knew that, uh, that I loved being around people. I, I, I knew that about myself before this happened. I loved being around people as a person and as a minister. But I had no idea how much being around people fueled my soul fueled the way that I interacted and, and, and my very essence, it fueled that. I had food, shelter, clothing, income, and several new streaming services, or services to check out when I am home, but just existing was not enough for me. So my prayers from March on would include petitions and complaints about the current state of me. And if 2019 Bill were to hear 2020 Bill's prayers, then 2019 Bill would be disgusted at such prayers. 
what are you complaining about? 2019 Bill would say, look at all your blessings that you have. Snap out of it and knock it off. And that's exactly how I viewed the Israelites in this story, the complaining and the griping until 2020. So when this text came up in our lectionary, for the first time ever with regards to this story, I resonated with the Israelites. I wasn't quick to see them as complainers that I have always seen. Now they were complaining a whole lot, but 2020 has brought me a fresh new perspective with which to approach this scripture. I've always thought the miracle in this story was that God sent manna and quail. And that's pretty miraculous. The people asked and God provided. But what if that wasn't the miracle at all? What if the miracle is that God listened and God heard God's people? When you are in the throes of depression or grief or loneliness or despair, the most powerful thing that someone can do for you is hear you and see you. Sometimes it is so powerful when, uh, when someone takes the time to listen and to hear what you are going through. The people went to God and God listened. God heard them. I don't think manna and quail were part of the original plan. I really don't. But God had rescued and redeemed Israel and they were on their way to Mount Sinai. But the people of Israel called out to God and said, help us more. And God didn't dismiss their complaints as frivolous, like I wanted to do. God heard them and responded. And in doing so, God continued to form and solidify God's relationship with Israel. The reason I thought the Israelites were being disrespectful was because they were being negative in the way that they were approaching Moses and Aaron and by extension, God. As a kid, the God songs that we sang in church were all positive. They were all heaping praise on God. The prayers we prayed in church were all positive. God, you are awesome. God, you are the best. There is none like you. I am not worthy to be in your presence. But have you looked at some of the songs from the Israelites? We have 150 songs in our holy book, and many of them are songs to be sung, and lots of them are complaints. Do not hide your face from me, O oh God. God, where are you in my times of distress? I am surrounded by my enemies and I don't like it. God hears those as much as God hears our praise and our joy. We have a God that hears us and knows us and invites us, warts and all, into a relationship with the divine. And in doing so, again, in doing so, God sees and hears us, and we are not alone. But that, that is not enough for the relationship with God. God has also provided the ability for us to enter into authentic relationships with each other, thus furthering our experience of the different manifestations of the holy. It's, it's exciting to think about that. We get to experience what God extends to all of us is authentic relationships and hearing one another. There was a friend of a friend, actually this friend sent me um, a, a shot of a Facebook post that, that his friend had made, and, and this is a friend in California. It's a woman on the West Coast who felt called by God to um, help serve and... Um, uh, the victims of the fire, they wanted, she wanted to provide something for these victims. So she found a distribution site that handed out clothing and, and food and these kind of things. And she volunteered at this distribution site. These people that were, came, that were coming in from the fires had lost everything. In, I mean, everything except for the shirts that are on their backs. And very quickly, though, this woman understood something that she didn't understand before she walked into that distribution center. While they were providing the necessary items to survive, almost every single person in there came in, needed something more. They needed to tell their story. They needed to be heard. Look at the pictures, the one man said, as he showed her, uh, showed her his phone. Look at the picture of my house burning. And the house behind that is my neighbor's house. Now, my neighbor made it out as well. She's 90 years old. Can you believe that? 
Another one said, I walked for a mile before I found my dog and then we could go. The first 20 people that she encountered by handing out clothes and food all told her some version of their story. She was humbled and moved and right where she needed to be. That was the calling that she heard from God. Not to hand out clothing, even though that's very important, but to listen to their stories. The pandemic, the fires, the loss, the trauma, food, clothing, and shelter are good and necessary, but they also needed to be heard. Being invited into that space, that authentic space, is more valuable than a pair of shoes. And because of my profession, I'm invited into people's stories all the time. And I can tell you that there are few things that touch me more than being invited into someone else's story. In seminary, I was terrified to, to enact pastoral care. I had no idea what I was doing, and I really didn't take a lot of classes on it. And so I was not prepared to engage in pastoral care after I was ordained. But it has become one of the most rewarding things that I can do. I thought I was supposed to fix all the problems. That's what I thought originally. Of course, seminary uh, corrected that, that mindset. I thought when people came in, I was supposed to fix their issues. But simply being present and hearing another is so much more powerful. It's one of the best benefits of this job right here. I get to hear people's stories. I get to devote my time to just listen to people. People tell their pastor things they would only tell their therapist or their bartender. And when people, you know, and if, if I'm out in a crowd and they don't know that I'm a pastor, uh, when people find out what I do for a living, they normally do two things. Right off the bat, they know I'm a minister and they go, oh, um, I'm so sorry for cussing. Everyone apologizes to me for their foul language. And I normally respond with something like, that is okay, my child, go and sin no more. No, I, no, I don't say that at all. The, again, they apologize for that, and then invariably, most of the time, if there's enough time to talk, they launch into their life story. I was sitting in a lawn chair several years ago, three or four years ago, when uh, I was at Leah Grace's soccer tryouts. This is Leah Grace's my youngest daughter. I was at her soccer tryouts for her soccer team. And this was all the teams, all the ages, boys and girls. There was lots and lots of parents there. So I'm sitting in this lawn chair. I have no idea who these people are that are around me. We're just kind of watching the tryouts. And so this woman comes and, and she was sitting near me and she goes, hey, when is this thing over? Do you know? Because my kids have youth group uh, after this at church. And I say, oh, I think it's over at six o'clock. But she mentioned church. So I said, where do your kids go to church? Where do you go to church? And she told me, and then I said, oh, well, I'm a minister at Forest Park Christian Church at 91st and Mingo. There's about 10 seconds of silence. And then she says, I'm going through a divorce, you know. My husband cheated on me. And now I'm not going to get to see my kids as much as I normally would had this not happened. This has turned my life upside down, and I don't know where to turn. And then she bursts into tears. What am I supposed to do? At that, she's crying, and I said, so what, um, what position does your kid play? No, no, I didn't say that. I said the line that I say all the time, because I get to say it all the time, tell me what happened. It is so powerful to be invited into someone else's story. And being seen and being heard is foundational to who we were created to be. We have a God that sees us and hears us and reassures us that we are never alone. And even if we are complaining and griping at our wit's end, God gets it. God understands and God knows us. God heard me when my prayer shifted to laments and complaints about what I was experiencing. And, I, and God gave me opportunity after opportunity to fuel my soul. And I, when I reached out in despair, then I started noticing different elements uh, on my faith journey where I could fuel my soul, my manna and my quail. And my quail kept manifesting itself near me when people just telling me their life stories. Again, it's been the greatest slice of normalcy for me when someone reaches out and says, I'd like to talk to you. 
Reach out to God during this time, I urge you. Because we serve a God who hears you and wants to hear everything about you. Your praises, sure, heap your praises onto God, but also your laments and your yelling and your despair. Invite someone else into your story and let them invite you into theirs. Because again, we are all part of God's family and God hears us, knows us, and loves us. Praise be to that God. Amen. Folks, we serve a God who hears us, hears us every single time and encourages us to hear one another that the authentic, beloved community might be formed around understanding, love, and compassion. Now, if you're looking for a church home, let me highly recommend Forest Park Christian Church, where we try to hear one another as God hears us. If you'd like a church family like that, reach out to me. My email address is revbillhem at gmail.com. And I would love to be in conversation with you about what it means to be a part of this community of faith. If you've never made that good confession that Jesus is the Christ, son of the living God, I urge you, reach out to me in the exact same way. And I would love to journey with you through these initial steps of what it means to follow someone who hears us, hears everyone when we cry out. For the rest of us, take this time as a time of renewal, thinking about all the times you were heard and all the times you need to reach out and hear someone else. With these thoughts, please join me in our benediction prayer. Holy and gracious God, thank you for listening to us. Thank you for hearing us and responding in kind. In your son's name we pray, amen. Go in peace. God bless.